Hi, my name is Tina Pender, and today I'm going to be talking about the impacts of physiochemical changes on honeycomb candy. So first, we're, consider, we're going to consider food testing and food waste. So hard candy is something that's popular across the world, and sometimes there's a desired characteristic of this candy, and to do so, people will do a lot of testing to figure out how to get that. And so this can lead to a lot of food waste. And so to, in order to avoid this food waste, Day, we're going to do, um, I'm going to go over some testing that we did using honeycomb candy. And so first we're going to talk about the formation of this honeycomb candy in our baseline experiment. And so in our baseline experiment, we add sugar, water, corn syrup, and honey into a pan. And we add that pan onto some heat. Um, we keep track of the temperature. Once it reaches 300 Fahrenheit, we take the pan off the heat and we add baking soda we then mix it for five to 10 seconds, and then we poured that candy out onto a baking sheet. Now in different experiments, we varied the corn syrup to sugar ratio. We changed the temperature of which we cooked the candy to, as well as the amount of baking soda added to the candy. So things that we considered when looking at the characteristics of the candy after, first we considered hardness. And so to do hardness testing, we took a stress ball and we dropped it from 30 centimeters above the candy. And after this was done, we were able to look at the applied load, which was calculated using the height and the weight of the ball that was dropped onto the candy, as well as the diameter of the ball used and the diameter of the indent on the candy. We were also able to do some density calculations. These were pretty simple. We looked at the length times width times height, which we measured with the ruler, and then the mass of the candy, which we weighed out with the scale. When considering some of the chemistry behind how the baking soda reacts and forms those bubbles in the candy, essentially when you take sodium bicarbonate and you add it with heat, uh, we get the formation of carbon dioxide gas. There's also water and sodium carbonate formed in this reaction, but the gas is what forms the bubbles in the candy. Other factors to consider when thinking about how changing things affects the final result of the candy, um, first, the temperature of which the candy is cooked to affects the moisture, and the moisture content affects the ways that the, the sugar crystallizes in the candy. And so more moisture will lead to a softer candy, and less moisture will lead to a harder candy. Something else to consider is the component the components made that make up the candy and how the molecules affect the final candy itself. So when looking at our first aim, we looked at the amount of baking soda and we found that increasing the amount of baking soda leads to a decrease in density and hardness of the candy. And so in the first graph, we can look at the density and we could see that there's a continuous decrease in density as we increase the amount of baking soda. And this is because when we add more baking soda, more baking soda reacts, therefore causing more bubbles in the candy, which would decrease the density and increase the volume. And then when looking at the hardness of the candy, we would expect this to decrease as well when we increase the amount of baking soda. This is because when we see more bubbles in the candy, um, it the candy becomes softer or more brittle. And therefore, when we drop the ball onto the candy, it will leave a bigger indent. The next thing we considered is changing the cook cooking temperature. And we found that when we increase the cooking temperature, we find a decrease in density and a general increase in hardness. And so we can see in the density graph, as cooking temperature is increased, the density decreases. And this is because um, the, the heat that the baking soda is heated to affects the kinetics of it. So at a higher temperature, the baking soda will react faster. And at a lower temperature, the baking soda will react slower. So what we see here is that at higher temperatures, more of the baking soda is reacting, therefore causing more bubbles which will decrease the density of the candy in the end. Now, when looking at the hardness number, we see that as the cooking temperature increases, so does the hardness up till 300, and then around 325, we see the hardness decrease. And so when the cooking temperature increases, the hardness is increasing because there's less moisture in the candy. So when we cook the candy to a higher temperature, it allows for more water to boil off, which will make the candy harder. And so when the candy is harder and the ball is dropped on it, there's a smaller indent. Now, when considering our data at 325 Fahrenheit and the hardness number being lower, 
something that could explain this is that the baking soda is reacting more. So there's more bubbles within the candy, which will also affect the hardness factor. So um, that would explain why at 325, we're seeing a decrease in hardness, just an increase in bubbles and um, uh, baking soda reaction rate. Now, when considering the changes in the corn syrup to sugar ratio, we saw that there was really no correlation to the density and hardness. And so when we look at these graphs, across the bottom is the amount of sugar added. And we kept it constant that the amount of sugar plus the amount of corn syrup added to the candy was always one and a quarters cup. And so what we see is that when we add, when we change the ratio of sugar to corn syrup for density and the hardness number, there is pretty much no correlation. And so something that could explain this is that uh, glucose is made up of, I mean, sugar is made up of sucrose and corn syrup is made up of glucose. And these two molecules have very similar properties. And so when they're uh, crystallized, there's similar density of these chemicals as well as bonding. And so we would expect the crystals to also have similar hardness um, and densities in the end. Since they are all cooked to the same temperature, we would expect the same amount of bubbles from the baking soda. And so to go over our overall conclusions from the experiment, we see that increasing the amount of baking soda decreases the density and decreases the hardness of the candy. We found that increasing the cooking temperature decreased the density of the candy and generally incre increased the hardness of the candy. And finally, changing the corn syrup to sugar ratio had no correlation to the density or hardness number of the candy. Thank you.